Well, good evening. Hello, hello, hello. How are we doing tonight, OC Singles for Christ? Yeehaw. We are so excited to worship with you guys, and we are kicking off the Christmas season. Who's ready for some Christmas? Come on. Who's, I should be more accurately asking, who's ready for our Emmanuel, our Jesus, our God who is with us and celebrating him? He who has left his throne to come down to earth in a, as a humble babe to die for our sins, to show us what love truly is, to show us the Father. So we're excited to lift up his name on high and proclaim his great promises. For those of you that have joined us online, we are so glad that you have tuned in. Hello, hello, and hello as always to Mama in Minnesota. Looking forward to seeing you in less than two weeks, I think it is. On that note, my name is Jessica, by the way. Say hi, Jessica. Hi, guys. Hello. Say hello to Alan and Audrey. Yeah. We are ready to lift up some hallelujahs, so why don't we stand together? It is our God who is so good to us that makes us sing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, your love makes me sing. Your love is is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain, firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, your love makes me sing. surprising I can feel it rising all the joy that's growing deep inside of me every time I see you all your goodness shines through I can feel this God song rising up in me hallelujah 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 oh your love makes me sing
Well, we are going to join the angels tonight, thinking of that scene way back when, when those angels showed up to the shepherds. Can you imagine the scene on a dark, starry night? And the angels showed up and said, there is good news. I don't know about you, but I could use some good news tonight. That our God is with us. He is here. And he loves you with a relentless love. No matter what's going on in our lives, his love will never change. Amen. So we're going to sing Gloria in excelsis Deo to our God. All right, let's get our Christmas on. are gone I've been 
We are so thankful for your amazing grace tonight. Father, would you come in your spirit, with your love and grace and mercy. Let your goodness rule and reign over us tonight as we celebrate your love. Touch every heart as we worship you in spirit and in truth. You know, I heard this quote, and it so spoke to me. It says, worry is a conversation you have with yourself about things you cannot change. But prayer is a conversation you have with God about the things he can change. I think that's a word for someone tonight. Our God is so good. Joshua 119 says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. James 2 says, even the demons believe and tremble. You know, in Christ... That means we have his resurrection power not only available to us, but it lives in us. Think about how awesome that is for a second. He is the light of the world, and we know that light dispels darkness. So everywhere you go with his light, you dispel darkness. I think that's an encouraging word as we head into the Christmas season to continue to be lights in this crazy, chaotic world. Amen? Amen. storm surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every wave at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again, I will praise, breathe, call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again, I will praise Jesus. Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, 
Jesus, Jesus. darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. sing this chorus one last time together. Whatever is going on in our lives tonight, we are singing the beautiful power and presence of Jesus over us, over our families, over this Christmas season. For some, this is a bittersweet time. Lord, we lift up your name as a banner over us, as our shield, our protection, as goodness, your grace, your mercy. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness 
Father, you are so good to us. We're so grateful that we can call on the name of Jesus, knowing that you cast out fears. Even the enemy trembles at your name. Lord, we ask that you would come with holy fire as that light. And would you be a beacon of hope for us in this Christmas season. Lead us and guide us. Help us to be that light to others. For hope has a name, and that name is Jesus. Lord, come with your power, that resurrection power, and pour out a fresh blessing of your love, your grace and your mercy over every heart in this place. I thank you, Lord, that you know every single one by name. You've known them since before the foundations of the earth, and you know the plans that you have for them. So in this season, would you come and bring comfort and joy and good tidings? Thank you, Lord, for coming to our rescue. We love you, and we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen. You can be seated. Grab a seat, everybody. Welcome to Orange County Singles and Couples for Christ on this Friday night. And uh, glad that you are here. Uh, hey, 23 more days, and it's Christmas. You ready? Uh, yeah, okay. I haven't even started yet. Uh, Jessica? Yes. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Uh, tonight we're going to be celebrating communion. It's the first Friday of the month. If you didn't get a communion cup, would you raise your hand? There's a couple of guys in the back that will be passing, uh, coming around with a, a basket to help you out there. We'll be getting to that in just a moment. But glad that you're here. And uh, how many of you guys made the potluck last Friday night? Yeah, a lot of you guys did. I was amazed at how many people showed up. Tons of food. Uh, I left right as uh, Bill uh, West started speaking. I have been sick with the flu. I'm fine now, about 95%, but the last two Friday nights I have not been able to be here. And if you need to lose weight, get the flu. Okay? I am down to my lowest weight in 16 years. So uh, slim it down, baby, slim it down. So, and uh, my poor wife's at home in bed with pneumonia, and she's lost about eight pounds. So, uh, uh, we both got the flu, and I kind of went one way, and her, for her, she kind of, her chest, it, her cold got into her chest, and now she has incipient pneumonia. So uh, I've had it twice. I said, honey, it's going to be okay, you know. I had it when I was a kid <clears throat> a couple of years ago, and uh, I know medicines are a lot better than they were a couple of years ago. So I'm like, honey, hang in there. You're going to be okay. So I think she's watching uh, via online. For those of you online, God bless you and welcome. Thank you for being here. If you happen to be in Orange County, that is our current address. And uh, you're welcome to come join us. We're here till about midnight. So uh, we'll leave that up on the screen for about another five seconds. And let's go to the next slide. This is our elder board. This is, uh, 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 we have six guys on the elder board. We're looking for two more guys to join our elder board. And so if you have a, a heart to uh, minister to the body of Christ and lead the body of Christ as a servant of the Lord. Come see me. Love to talk with you. And uh, that is our elder board. And all of them are here tonight. Oh, wait, David's uh, back east. Okay, next slide. All right, here's our schedule for the rest of the month. Just want to make sure you guys are uh, on track. We're here tonight. We're here next Friday night, which is December 9th. Then next Saturday is the annual Christmas dance. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we're here the 16th, and then on the 23rd is a special Christmas program with desserts. Uh, there will no, be no dinner that night, as we normally do a dinner. I know news flash to Kimberly and her team, but uh, there won't be any dinner that night, but we will have Christmas 
pastries and cookies and things like that afterwards. And then on the, tw- on the 30th, we're closed. And then we begin a uh, new ministry uh, cycle here at Orange County Singles for Christ Church at our new building on January 6th. Next slide, I believe. Uh, okay, uh, not quite where I wanted to go, but that's okay. So as you know, over the last two months, we've been on a capital fundraising program to raise 16000 And uh, for most churches, that's a drop in a bucket. For us, that's a push. And right now, we are pretty close to goal. We're about $3,600 away from that goal. And uh, we've over, the other building has already got new TVs, it's, uh, uh, new equipment, new AV equipment. And uh, uh, this, this coming week will be uh, new, some new lights and things of that nature. We're kind of partnering with the other church to kind of uh, make it um, as appealing as possible for you. Uh, you'll see it all next Saturday night for those of you who are going to be at the Christmas dance. But the last thing we need to get is a a moving van or a box truck or a trailer. So if you happen to know anybody who's got a 15-footer, either a trailer, you know what a trailer is, there's just a couple doors in the back and you just put your stuff in there, or a box truck like a U-Haul, used U-Haul, let us know. Maybe someone has one to donate. That's always a nice thing. Or we have set aside about 7,500 bucks to go find one. So out of that 16,000. So... Next, so if you want to be a part of helping us out in that couple of fundraising, love to have you join the party. That is our new address starting on the 6th, and I am letting you know every Friday night, a sure shooting come January 6th, somebody's going to be knocking on the door going, where is everybody? I've only been telling everybody for three months, two and a half months to be exact. We're going to be at the Orange Tree. If you know where the Irvine uh, Valley College is, it's right next to it. And uh, there's three churches right now, like an L shape. Journey, uh, a Church of Scientology or something like that, and then there's Pacific Church. So, um, and that's where we'll be. And again, those of you coming to the Christmas dance next Saturday, you'll see it all. All right, next slide. What do we got coming up? All right, this is the first Friday of the month, and we do communion. Did everybody get a little guy? Everybody's cool? All right, so... Uh, uh, when I think of communion, I was thinking this week, you know, there is no better representation about communion. And this next slide is the spirit of Christmas. Christmas is all about reminding ourselves, and it transports us to a place of a time of refreshment, a time of renewal, a time of restoration. Because when you think about the Christmas story, everybody gets all excited about a baby in a manger, um, 2000. 22 years ago, and uh, which may have looked something like that, but the reality is, is God came into the flesh, born as a baby, just like you and I, but he had one purpose and goal in mind. The Apostle Paul says he was to ultimately be a sacrifice, and if you look up that word in the Greek, it means to give, it means to get murdered, and uh, basically Jesus Christ was murdered for yours and my freedom, forgiveness restoration, home in heaven, etc. It's all, uh, Christmas is all about that. So then this next slide, I break, uh, broke down the three R's there. It refreshes our memory and understanding of Jesus' appearance on earth. He was born to die. I just mentioned that. He came to set the captives free. Who are the captives? We were. Matter of fact, everybody is who's ever been born. He came to save us from our sins, and he came to give us a path to the Father and to himself in heaven and opening up heaven itself as represented when the night that Jesus or the afternoon that Jesus was crucified one of the things took place was anybody remember what happened to the temple curtain got torn up to the top or top to the bottom top to the bottom only God could do that ripped that puppy in two saying hey the way into my presence is now open to any and you and I have that opportunity 24-7. doesn't matter where you are, what you're going through. You all and we all have a path to him. I love that. In this next slide, in a time of renewal, it's where we re- uh, recommit ourselves to Jesus Christ. We recommit ourselves to our mission in life. Because we've all got a mission, which is to glorify God and to make him known to others. Pretty basic stuff. To glorify God in us and through us in our work, in our in our daily living, 
and to make him known to others as God opens up opportunities for you and I to witness to other people. That's our mission. And that mission is coming to a close. I don't know about you, but I think that Jesus is coming back soon. And when he does, this time of kingdom building is over. It's a time for you and I to earn rewards and be a part of extending this kingdom to one more soul is over. Why would that be? Anybody? Because we'll be in heaven. There won't be any evangelization in heaven. There won't be any souls to get saved in heaven. There won't be any opportunities to tell people about Jesus in heaven because they're going to see him face to face. But it's a time of renewal, and we need this on a daily basis, by the way. And then finally, a time of restoration where we always need a restoration of fellowship with him, with him on a daily basis. Life just gets going on in years of my life, the pressures of the day, the debts that pile up, whatever. And we need to remember at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. And therefore, we always need to have a, tense, a sense of continual cleansing because you and I go about life. We hear things we shouldn't hear. We see things we shouldn't see or we think things we shouldn't think. And uh, we need to be cleansed. And we need to always have a sense of God's love and care for yours in my life. Because it's easy to forget this. And I think there's a reason why Jesus talked about doing communion as often as you meet. We do it once a month. The early church was doing it every day. Why? Because they needed to be reinforced over and over and over again that God loves us. God cares about us. God has a plan for us. It's going to be okay. We always need the spirit of Christmas in our lives. That being God so loved the world and you can fill in the rest. That he loved you enough to come and leave the glories of heaven to hang around for 33 and a half years to provide a pathway for you and I end up in glory. In this next slide, we are given uh, Jesus' account of the Last Supper. When he had taken a cup, this little guy right here, you can grab this little puppy. He had given things. He said, take this and share it among yourselves, for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God come. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me same way you took the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood, and I would strongly suggest that you go, and under, if you don't understand what's going on here, this is a Jewish stater taking place, the Last Supper. <clears throat> Bread is significant, took the cup is significant, there were four cups on the, on the table, and uh, Luke is very specific, he took the cup and talks about a new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31, I've said this a million times. This is Jesus instituting Jeremiah 31, 31 in people's lives. And finally, the Apostle Paul adds a little bit of uh, a disclaimer to the uh, Lord's Supper. For he says some of the same things. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, which we do, reminding ourselves afresh, afresh of what the payment was for us to enjoy the presence of God in our lives. Therefore, whoever eats of the bread or drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat the bread and drink the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he doesn't judge the body rightly. Interesting that Jesus didn't talk about that, but Paul did. And there's just a sense in which you come to the communion table, you just get right with God. Is there anything there that God has a controversy with? I'm not your Holy Spirit. I'm not the angel on your shoulder that walks with you every day, that angel being the Holy Spirit. But you also have the adversary on a shoulder as well, uh, whispering stuff where we do things we just shouldn't be doing. And when we do get off the rails, so to speak, we find ourselves in a place where we need to just judge the body rightly. So... In a moment of silence, ask the Holy Spirit if there's something he has a controversy with in your life and ask him for forgiveness. That's what it's all about. So I'm going to shut up and you do business with God and then we'll partake. For those of you who are online, you're welcome to... 
go in the kitchen, get some bread, get some grape juice, and join us in communion. It doesn't matter the elements that you're taking. What matters is that we are celebrating what Jesus asked us to remember. That Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross. His body was bruised for our iniquities. He paid the price for us to enjoy fellowship with God forever and ever. And we remind ourselves of these truths by what Jesus instituted, calling uh, one of them the Lord's Supper. And so in the next couple seconds, run to the kitchen, grab some bread, grab some grape juice, or any juice for that matter, and you can partake with us as well. Now, friends, as we, as we look at this little hourglass, on one side is some grape juice, on the other side is uh, a little wafer. And uh, let's start with the wafer tonight. We start with the wafer. You're welcome to open it up and remind it. We remind ourselves of the incredible beating Jesus Christ took on the cross, and even before that, through the Romans. Isaiah says he was beaten so badly you could not recognize him as who he was. I can't even fathom that. I can't even fathom not wanting to lash out when somebody's beating my brains in. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ was silent as a lamb being sheared by its owner. He was quiet. Amazing to think about in the midst of all that. So as we take this bread together, we remind ourselves of the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even more powerful is this grape juice. When you think about it, when Jesus expended himself on the cross, when most of the blood in his body was drained, all it took was one drop to cleanse all of humanity's sin. And yet he gave it all. But one drop of Jesus' blood would have been sufficient to cleanse all of humanity's sins because he was the God-man, he was sinless, he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He came to live a life in submission and humility to the Father, empowered by the Holy Spirit, but he knew his mission in life would eventually be to be a sacrifice on a cross for you and I. For all of eternity, you're going to see some nails in his hands, and I guess if you ask, he could show you the spear mark on his side. But I think we'll get it pretty quick when we see him. The glory, or not the glory, but what he went through in order for us to enjoy the glory of being in his presence. So let's partake of the juice together as we remind ourselves of the shed blood of Christ. Father in heaven, we just thank you for these moments of communion. The church has been celebrating communion for over 2,000 years. As you said so. Because it's a time of reflection. It's a time of restoration. It's a time of renewal. We're able to forget the cares of this life and the pressures of this life and the hurts of this life. There's a lot of joy too in this life as well. But we're able to just get our eyes off of this life onto the life, the eternal life, Jesus Christ who has given to us as well eternal life. These bodies in which we indwell will eventually die someday if the rapture doesn't take place beforehand. But there is the promise of Scripture that these bodies will rise again from the dead. In the mortality will be replaced by immor immortality. A earthly body will be raised, a spiritual body to be just like Jesus' body. We'll be in your presence for all of eternity. So many people think that heaven is in heaven. The reality is the Bible says, according to Revelation, that the heaven is right back here on earth. After the thousand year reign of Christ and there's another rebellion, the earth is burned up by fire and renewed, restored, beautified, and the new city of Jerusalem, 1,500 miles cubed, comes out of heaven to rest upon the earth. Amazing, amazing thoughts to think of. When we look at the picture of the new Jerusalem, how gorgeous it is. 
That is our home. That's our future. So Jesus, thank you for the communion time where we can be renewed, restored, and reminded of your amazing grace extended to us at the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I love communion. I don't know about you, but it just for me, it's just a time to get re-centered. That God is a good God. God is a gracious God. God cares about me. He cares about what's going on. And at the end of the day, when Jesus says time to come home, it all becomes nothing. And we enjoy the beauty and the cares and the love and the warmth of heaven itself. The band's going to take a break, and they'll be back in about a half an hour. At uh, this time, there we have two classes for you to enjoy tonight. We're in the Christmas season, so both messages are kind of about Christmas. I am in here talking about the grandeur of Christmas, and Pastor Mark is standing right there. He's going to be in room 10, and he's going through a series on Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Tonight, he's looking at Joseph, a just man, and he's going to be in room 10. So please, those of you who like to join Pastor Mark Follow him and march out to those, those doors right there into that classroom. And uh, both classes will be back in here at, uh, well, we're not going anywhere, but Pastor Mark's class will be here about 8.50, 8.55 or so. And uh, at that time, we'll finish up the evening. All right, you guys, good to be with you. Anybody here for the first time, by the way? Anybody here? Do we have any first-timers? Hi there, Trisha is way over there, and are you three of the gals from New Mexico? Hi there, New Mexico, lady number one, lady number two, lady number three. Uh, they actually are from New Mexico and uh, checking us out, and they're going back to New Mexico tomorrow, if, as from what I understand anyway. So tonight I am uh, beginning a series entitled The Grandeur of Christmas. And you know, we live in a day where it just seems like Christianity is on the wane. Even in evangelical churches, Bible teaching and Bible teaching churches, defining that for you, people have stopped believing in the basics of Christianity, even the authority of Scripture. And may I humbly suggest to you that once you leave and lose your view of Scripture and the authority of Scripture, you have nothing. You have nothing. If this does not have the, if this is not the word of God, then it's just a bunch of history lessons, history, cool stuff that took place a couple thousand years ago, and that's about it. Because truth is irrelevant. Truth is whatever you choose it to be. And yet the Bible declares itself to be the word of God, and, it, and if so, it is the authority for yours and my life. And most of humanity today is very much unchurched. Even in America, where you think about uh, being a Christian nation, we are very much a third world nation when it comes to the Bible. Well, why, what's the cause for that? Why are churches seemingly failing, the church of the congregation, if they're failing? Is the unbelief of the world creeping into the church? Mm, probably. You know, people show up to potlucks, dances, movie nights, cruises, anything fun but get serious about God, <laughs> wait a minute, eh, okay, you know, I don't need another Bible study, I don't need another Christmas story message, yeah, you do. It seems like many Christians don't have time for God. I read this week, I don't know if you read the same article in Fox News, that Christianity for the first time ever is a minority religion in England and in Wales. Do you know that? That's a country of thousands of years of churches and great Christian men and women of God who've written marvelous books, marvelous edifices to Christianity. As Christianity is now a minority religion. Every 10 years, they do a, they do a census of what's going on in that country. And in uh, 2001, 72% of respondents said they were Christians. 72%. In 2011, 59% said they were Christians. And in 2021, 46.2%. Going down. Going down dramatically. 
there was almost as many atheists in these two countries than there was Christians, or there was Christians. Really fascinating. And uh, you think of that and you go, what's going on? Because didn't Jesus say, hey, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it? What's going on? When you look at various parts of the world, what's going on? I just think you need to take a look and see where is God moving around the world. And America has had its place. We've had our uh, revivals. We've had our awakenings. And America sure needs another one today because we're believing in everything except the Word of God today. In America, there is a dramatic shift amongst the youth of today that don't believe in anything. It's really interesting. And when you think about the fact that for the last, since the advent of the smartphone or the computer, most people, most young people's friends are on the computer or TikTok which, by the way, happens to be run by China. If you have TikTok on your cell phone, throw out your cell phone or at least delete TikTok because you are being indoctrinated whether you realize it or not. But there is, uh, in Arizona, the Arizona um, uh, Christian University did a research and found that amongst the youth of today, there's just a massive drop off and it's really sad. But it doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. It just means that Bible appreciation amongst our youth of today has really declined. There are other factors as well. There are phobias going around today that just abound all the way around us. People are afraid of everything. People are afraid of death. People don't want to go to work. They want to stay at home and be work online. And that's why you have companies today demanding that their employees get back to work. The media and its cohorts have done a masterful job over the last few years to create fear so bad that people are afraid about everything. People are afraid to go to work. People are afraid to shop. People are afraid to even go shop for food, which given, has given rise to Instacart, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and I think there's another one out there where people are ordering their food through delivery services because they don't want to go into stores. Interesting. People are afraid to shake hands. People still think the six-foot rule works, which was a lie to begin with. It doesn't work. And when you sit at home all day long, like most people do, and you look at the news, it's all negative, negative, negative. Our mainstream media doesn't report on the issues facing America today. They're not telling you about inflation being at the highest in 40 years, gas prices through the roof, crime is exploding all over the places. There's a mass migration of people out of democratic run cities i don't know if you know this or not but there's a massive migration out of those cities because things are just out of control but you would never hear that on mainstream media because there's this thing called deflection got a lot of puff articles how to bake a turkey how to how to french fry a turkey you know they're like that's really important to be talking about where you got all this stuff over here where society is just crumbling, your kids are being taught down to a third grade level about LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, F when it comes to gender identification, and parents have no voice in the matter, you kind of go, whoa. But you got to filter through what you hear to be able to get to the truth of what's taking place. There's also this thing called the great apostasy taking place in our world today. In the, uh, this verse of scripture that's coming up, and because uh, I don't have it in my notes, this is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. So I'm going to read quick. Now we request you, brethren, with regards to the coming of our Lord and our gathering together to him, yeah, that's going to be fun, that you do not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come until the apostasy comes first. What is the apostasy? It's the falling away from the faith. And you see that taking place in America. I just quoted you things from England and Wales, Scotland, and the, what's the other country that's part of that? Uh, they haven't reported yet. Um, but um, there is a falling away taking place. And then the uh, man of lawlessness will be, be revealed. That's a, read that on your own. But the apostasy is taking place now. We also have the adversary. 
the adversary knows that his time is short. In this next verse of scripture from Revelation 12, we are told that Satan knows that his time is short and he's going to wreak havoc here on earth. And that's what you see taking place. People are just killing each other over nothing. I mean, you got those four people in Idaho who were slaughtered in their sleep and no one knows who killed them. You know, I mean, talk about ultimate evil. Woe to the earth and the seas because the devil has come to you having great wrath, knowing that he has a short time. Now, that hasn't happened yet. But the spirit of the world is the spirit of Antichrist. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. People are walking in darkness and they're walking to his marching orders and they don't even know it, according to Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 4. I know there are verses of scriptures, by the way. So there's a lot that's leading to uh, this um, sense of the waning of Christianity. So what's the answer to all this madness and mess that's taking place? Do we continue to live in fear? Do we fret over declining church attendance? Now, in some mainstream Protestant churches that are not preaching the truth, yeah, they are losing memberships. Because people are gravitating towards churches that are preaching the truth. Because people can smell a rat. And they can smell when things aren't do, being done right. Or do we find answers to our concerns someplace else? And hence, I believe the answer to that is found in the, Christian, the Christmas message. It's a Christian message that brings hope and love and gets us to focus on what's taking place. God's answer to a lost humanity is found in the Christmas story. Today is December 2nd. Much is going to be thrown at you and I in the next 23 days. Different messages, that is. But as Christians, the Christmas message is really the only message that matters. And we need to reacquaint ourselves with the Christmas message, for it is here we find hope and life and significance, the meaning in life itself, and freedom from fears. And so tonight we're going to embark on a three-week series on the intention of Christmas and hopefully have some fun in the process. While our society sheds off Christian traditions, it used to be Christmas break, then it became holiday break, now it's winter break. While our world focuses on wars, climate, shares, uh, climate change, supposedly anyway, deficit spending and volcanoes, volcanoes going off all around. You guys watched the uh, Mauna Loa going off this week? First time in 40 years in the main island of Hawaii? I think it's cool. And there's another volcano that's going off someplace in Europe, and there's other ones going off as well. Ireland. Um, I think it's cool. There's a whole host of issues that are confronting us, and yet Christians celebrate the incarnation of Christ, God becoming a man in the person of Jesus. In the Trinity, from eternity past, God Almighty purposed to come to this earth and walk this earth like you and I do. He became like us to love us and eventually spend eternity with us in heaven. And then back here on earth when the new uh, Jerusalem comes out of heaven. And that thought should just absolutely captivate us. Jesus Christ left the glories of heaven to be with us, to love us, to care for us, and to be with us forever. That was God's choice, not ours. That fact ought to blow your minds as we celebrate the incredible truth that God became a man that's represented in the virgin birth, life and death of Jesus Christ. We understand who we understand to be the second person of the Trinity. And as I talked earlier about understanding the authority of Scripture, without the virgin birth, without the knowledge of Jesus' lineage, life, his life and death, you got nothing. You have nothing. These three truths are the bedrock of Christianity. Christmas, and everybody loves Christmas. In the next 23s ahead of us, we're going to party more, eat more, gain more weight. Unless you get the flu and you'll lose weight, dress up more, you'll sleep a lot less than any time of the year. Our holiday season begins on Thanksgiving and it just races after that. Black Friday, which is now added to it. What's Saturday? Huh? Small business. Support the small business. Then you have Monday. What's Monday? 
Cyber Monday. Everything is about you trying to get uh, marketers trying to spend money that you don't have for stuff that you don't need that you're probably never going to open up at Christmas time and it'll end up in your garage to eventually be in a future garage sale. <laughs> and in the process, you get yourself in debt. And our personal debt, by the way, is shooting through the worth, roof. If you pay attention to these things, people are living off their credit cards because of inflation. But you'll never hear that in the news. It's amazing. And next year, we're told there's going to be a recession. It's going to be tough for debt-heavy people. Actually, there is some good news. As you know, this year, on, the, uh, on Thursday, Thanksgiving, there wasn't one death in a Walmart. Did you hear about her death? Remember how there used to be riots on Thanksgiving Day when Walmarts uh, opened up because of this special deal on something that people rushed the store, and for some unfortunate employee, that would be their last day on earth. Remember those days? This year, stores were empty, <laughs> which is interesting that, that I read anyway, that there wasn't that many people in the stores because people were doing it online. People were staying home. And doing things that way, which is rather interesting. So let me ask you a question. Let's be a little honest here. How many of you have been out Christmas shopping? Raise your hands. There are some honest people out there. Okay. How many of you were Black Friday shoppers? Anybody a Black Friday shopper? Only one online. Okay. How many of you have your Christmas tree up? Oh, my gosh. We haven't even, my wife's sick, I've been sick, we haven't even gotten out of the house. How many of you are actually finished with your Christmas shopping? Wow, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Everybody loves to receive gifts from a loved one. A special gift or an item on a wish list, sometimes it's an unexpected gift, like an engagement ring or something like that. Everybody loves getting gifts. And while most people say they hate standing in lines, people still do so anyway. Because it's a great place to do some people watching. I don't know about you, it's just when I was a single guy, I used to go to the malls at Christmas time and just sit there and watch people walk by. You know, it was great people watching. It was a time, it's a time of merriment. So I have a question for you. Why do billions of people have such a good time at Christmas time at such an insignificant event? Remember, most of the world doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. If Christmas is not about Jesus Christ, what are we doing? You know, more, Christmas, more trees are cut down, more electricity is used, people doll up their homes like a Norman Rockwell painting. Think about it. Millions of babies are born every single day around the world. What was so great about Jesus' birth? For Christians, and really the whole world, the birth of Jesus Christ is the most significant event in humankind's history. His birth separated time. Before Christ, A.D. Every time you write a check, you are, uh, you are uh, authenticating the birth of Jesus Christ. Today is December 2nd, 2022. You are simply validating the fact that we are 2,022 years forward of Jesus' birth. The fact is, Christmas was God's idea. He planned what it happened, when it would happen. When it happened, there was one common language of the day, which was Koine Greek. Everybody spoke Greek. The New Testament, most of it, is written in Greek. How will it happen? Jesus, or God had already planned it out with two youngsters, Mary and Joseph. A couple of poor individuals. Where it would happen. God's call to both of them was in Nazareth. If you know anything about Nazareth of that day, it was a city of about 20,000 people, and it was a place in which your Roman soldiers went for leisure, if you catch my drift. It was a morally bankrupt city. Since Christmas is God's idea, maybe we should find out what God had in mind. On the night that Christ was born, God sent an angel to announce Jesus' arrival. In that birth announcement, we find God's three intentions for Christmas. And tonight we're going to look at the first intention of Christmas. 
In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. You've heard this story a million times. It is worth saying another million times. An angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, an angel of the Lord, by the way, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. Translation, pooping in their pants. Next slide. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Angels always seem to say that every time they show up. Why? They're huge. They are powerful looking. They scare the heck out of you. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, which is what city, by the way? Bethlehem has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The first intention of Christmas is a celebration. It's a celebration. What's so amazing about this plan in announcing the birth of someone so special, God chooses to come to a bunch of lowlifes, smelly, outcast people, shepherds. You would think that God would use Las Vegas type of venue with the lights and the streaming whatever, or maybe a, a Roman regalia with all their trimmings and all their their fancy uh, uh, official stuff. But God, what we see is a campfire. It's a campfire. The angels are hanging out by night around the campfire. A bunch of low-life guys hanging out, eating some s'mores on a cold night. God chooses to send an angel to a campfire and then announces his special event to one of society's wretchedest professions. Why did he choose shepherds? Stinky, smelly guys. Can you imagine that? Maybe the angel was flying by, he was hungry, and saw him, saw him eating s'mores and said, you know what, I think I'm going to have a s'more. I'm hungry. Nope. But that was the plan. It would be like sending an angel to, to Los Angeles homeless camps, in which there are 50,000 people in Los Angeles, and telling them about some good news. You see, God chooses the most insignificant outcast people to declare that a special event has happened or about ready to happen. Consider Daniel with the king, with the handwriting on the wall, with King Belteshazzar. Consider David and Goliath. Here's David, a ruddy guy, a youth, coming up against the guy nine foot six. And how about Gideon? Oh, mighty man of valor, Gideon. And where's Gideon? He's hiding in a wine press. And the angel of the Lord comes from, oh, mighty man of valor, the Lord has called you to lead the pure people. Are you kidding me? God always chooses and uses the underdog. And frankly, who's the underdog? Us. We're the underdogs. You say, how do you figure that out, Pastor? Well, we'll see in a second. You think maybe God would start with Biden. Announce it from the top on down. Or maybe our governor, who makes, loves to make decrees and then doesn't follow them. Where all the power brokers are. Maybe that's where God would show up. The game changers, the so-called elites, people of influence. God doesn't give a rip about people of influence. Because he's the God of influence. The elites, power structure, or influence means nothing to God. He always works in a way that is different from how the world thinks. Consider 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul makes it really clear in this observation about you and I, and it's rather humbling to read. For consider your calling, brethren, there are not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble or rich. But God has chosen the what? Foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, the base things of the world I hate being called a base individual. You know what that means? You're low life. You're base. But God uses the base things of the world to the, the spot and, God, and to despise. God has chosen the things that are not so that he may nullify the things that are, are so that no one may boast before him. God specializes in using ordinary people. Right here, right in this room, ordinary people. Gotta love it. For Christians, this time this is the time of year celebration because he planned it to be a celebration. 
It's a time to announce good news to anyone we come across. This is our holiday. This isn't happy Kwanzaa or happy Hanukkah. No offense to those religions. It's our religion. This is our holiday. This is Christmas. Period. And we should be very happy about that. So what are we supposed to be celebrating? Well, the angel tells us, I bring you good news of great joy. There are three reasons to celebrate. Number one, coming up on the slide here in just a second. Oh, we're going to skip that, and we're going to skip the next one. God loves you. That is a reason to celebrate. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Can you remember back before you knew Jesus to remember that you had no life and you had no idea where the heck you were going in life? You go, how can you say that, Pastor? Because people who don't know Jesus are walking in darkness and they don't know where they're going and all of us have been there. Come to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. When he comes to take residence in your heart, he begins to give you direction and enlightenment. And one of the things he says is, I love you. And what God is saying to you and I this Christmas is, I love you. It's not just the world that I love, and God does love the world, but it's a love based upon a relationship. God knows everybody and loves everybody by creative fiat, but only those he knows he loves by relationship. And that relationship with him is not based upon what you do or how you act or how rich you are or what job that you have or what clothes you have or what home you have or don't have. None of that matters. The agape love that he has is unconditional. COVID, cancer, the flu, joblessness, I've had them all. doesn't matter. Nothing gets in the way of God's love for you and I. And you've got to get that. To the person that God sets his love and affection upon is the recipient of an incredible truth. That before anything was created, in the vast universe of nothingness, God is out of love with you and an everlasting one at that. He's made a provision for everything. I don't know how he answers prayer, but he does. He is God, he is El Royi. One of the names for God is L E L Royi or R O I. It's one of the first names that is described in the Old Testament about who God is. And it was a name given to God through a pagan, Hagar. When Hagar's having a tussle with Sarah, Sarah says, Get out of here, take your son Ishmael and get out of here. She goes down the road, she's crying her brains out, and God shows up. Hey, what's going on, Hagar? What are you crying about? What's doing? And they have a discussion, and she says, you are God, or El Royi, the God who sees and has made a provision for. That's the only time it's ever used in Scripture. But the context of that story is powerful. And God knows exactly what's going on with Hagar. And what does he tell Hagar to do? Go back. Are you kidding me? Why would you go back to someone who just sent you out, kicked you out of the family? God's got a funny way of doing things. But that's what he told her to do. Think about this for a second. Do you know the human eye is an amazing creation of God? Do you know that if you know where to go in this world today in the night sky, and if you look in the right place, you will see our nearest galaxy, which is Andromeda. It's 2.7 billion light years away from us in the Milky Way galaxy. That means tonight, if you look up and if you were able to go to the right place in the sky, you would see light coming at you that's 2.7 billion light years old. Before all that light, God knew you. God loved you. He knew you the day of your birth. He knows everything about you. He knows when you were a one-cell, undivided thing in your mama's womb. He knows your skin color, your height, your weight. In my case, thankfully, he's got a calculator with a minus button on it. He knows your sin condition. God would make a plan to rescue you from your sin. He knew of your spiritual birth. God knows your future home in heaven and your address there. 
and you will see the unseen God face to face for all eternity to come. Wow, love it. Under any trying condition, under any horrible situation you may find yourself in, or anything that you may find yourself in, the main, this truth remains, God loves you, God sees, God cares, God will provide. I don't know how he provides, but he does. There's nothing in us for the basis of God's love towards us. We're sinners. We're fallen from grace. Flawed in every way, but God loves us anyway. Nobody has less love from God. So God doesn't love you, my dear, more than he loves Scott. Or Dr. David. We're all on a level playing field. We all got it all on the day we got saved. There's no performance-based acceptance with him. You don't have to do stuff in order to earn more of his love towards you. You got it all in a moment's notice. Romans 8. There's this incredible passage of Scripture that, God, that declares God's in, intent of God's love for you and I. It's found in verses 35 to 38. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation? No. The answer to these questions is no. Little little hint there. For, or distress? No. Persecution? Famine? Nakedness? Peril? Sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we're being put to death all day long. We're considered a sheep to be slaughtered. Boy, that's really fun to know. But in all these things we conquer through him who loved us. That's a yay. In all these things, we over, overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Yay! Hello. I am convinced that neither death. Yay! Come on, man. Play with me here. Did I put you all asleep already? Here, have some water. Somebody needs some water. Nor angels. Yay. Or principalities. Yay. Things present. Yay. Nor things to come. Yay. Powers. Yay. Height. Yay. Depth. Nor any other created thing, I love that one, no other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And OC family and friends, that's great news. It's not just good news, it's great news. There's absolutely nothing that can get in the way of God's love for you and I. God loves you and I, and that is something to celebrate. So get off your butt or your seat turn around and say God loves you and so do I and then have a seat let's celebrate we're on point one God loves you all right good job you guys are awesome second reason for celebrating is that God himself is with you. He himself is with you. Psalmist in Psalm 139 says, where can I go from your spirit? The answer, nowhere. Or where can I flee from your presence? The answer, nowhere. If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you're there. If I take the winds of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea or go to Hawaii like a bunch of people did from this church last week, lucky you, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. You can't get anywhere away from him. Hebrews 13.5. Apostle Paul tells us unequivocally that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So we can confidently say the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? He can kill you. Sure enough, that happens all the time. But that's just temporary and you're in the presence of the Lord. Isaiah 41.10 Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your helper. Is that what it says? No. What's it say? I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. People will abandon you. People will let you down. People will disappoint you. People will stab you in the back. Even those closest to you. Why? Because we're sinners and fallen, but God will never stab you in the back. He will never abandon you. You may not feel like he's near, but that just means you're not tuned in. You're not connected. You're not plugged into the source. 
or he is deepening your faith walk. God's very name declares that he is with us through the name what? What's God's name for God is with you? Come on, you Bible scholars. Manuel, next slide, I believe, says just that. Behold, a virgin will be a child and shall bring forth a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. There's only one reason why loneliness shouldn't exist within the Christian community. Oops, sorry, let me rephrase that. There should be no reason why loneliness exists in the church. God has made a provision. He's made a provision through marriage. Some will get married here. The other one is that God has made a home for the lonely. Psalm uh, 68, verse 6, God says that he will make a home for the home. That's why we did like the Thanksgiving dinner uh, last Thursday, or was it Wednesday? Yeah, Thursday, over at the new church, and I think I'm told about 35 of you showed up, is so that family can come together and not be alone. We'll probably do the same thing for Christmas someplace. A nice Christmas dinner. If I could be so cold, so bold as to say this, if you're not a Christian tonight, you're missing out on one of life's greatest experiences. You have a family here on earth? You may have a family here on earth, and unfortunately in many cases there's not a lot of healthy families. But in Christ Jesus, you will not only have the answer for loneliness, which is God's presence, but you'll also be a part of a really big family. Because remember when Peter asked the Lord, Lord, we've left everything to follow you. And Jesus said, truly I say to you, in this lifetime, you will have what? Hundreds of brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. He's talking about the family of God. And for a bonus, it lasts forever. Gotta love that. You and I will know each other forever. A billion years from now, drop on by to my mansion and say hi. <laughs> Let's have a heavenly adult beverage together, whatever that may be. Water from the, tree, uh, from the river of life, probably. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I would beseech you, now's, now's the time. Don't waste it. That God is with you and, and I is something really to celebrate and get excited about. So, here's your second opportunity to get excited, stand up, and say, God is with you. And thank you for being here tonight in the body of Christ. Get up and say, God is with you. Thank you for being here. All right. That was intention number two. The third reason to celebrate, yeah, you guys can have a seat. I'm running a little late. God is for you. God loves you. God is with you. And God is for you. He's your biggest cheerleader. In the great football game of life, he's standing on the sidelines going crazy. How many of you saw the overtime with the Raiders and uh, Seahawks last, last Sunday? Anybody see that? First play the Raiders get... And the guy goes for like an 80-yard touchdown running. The, 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 the team and the coaches are just running on the field, running down the field, just ecstatic. Having, they're just amazed at what just happened. God is just like that. He's on the sidelines going, yeah, baby, look at my son. Look at my daughter. Run. Run, baby, run. He's with you. He's your biggest cheerleader. Excuse me, he's for you. In Jesus' first appearance, Jesus came to save people, not condemn them. God's for you. John 3.17. How many of you have John 3.17 memorized? Everybody's got John 3.16 memorized. You know 17? Anybody? For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. It's all about salvation the first time around. Second time around is judgment. Not a good place to be if you're still here. And I hopefully you are not. Just like it, Jesus here doesn't judge the world, and it's not our place to judge people's position in life either or their future place. God already knows where they're going to end up. People already know they're sinners. They already know they're flawed. They don't need us to tell them, Ah, you sinner! No, they need to know about God's love because that we are in this time of grace. 
where God is forgiving anyone who will call upon his name. And we are the avenue in which people come to know and hear, hear and know that truth. That's why, we, that's why we exist as a church. For single adults and couples, there's a million point three single adults in Orange County. And almost no church has an active outreach to single adults 40 and above. That's why we're here, to provide a Christian family in the form of a Christian church to reach and disciple people with the life-transforming message of Jesus Christ. That's why everything that we do, every dollar we spend, goes towards singles. And we need your support in the process as well. If you're not supporting us or a church, hey, consider jumping in the jacuzzi. The water is warm. We need you. Heck, we need $16,000 just to move from here to the new place. And that's a drop in the bucket for most churches. For us, that's pretty close to Mount Everest. But we're almost there. The God who created the universe and who set the stars in their place and our earth in its axis, the, the God that provides every good thing in our lives says to us three things. I love you, I am with you, and I am for you. No matter where you are, where you're from, or what you've done with your life, the good news is for you and me. That God loves you, that God is with you, and that God is for you. And that's worth celebrating. No matter what sin you may and I may have committed, no matter what tragic event may have happened in our lives, and trust me, I've had many, or what tragic event uh, that has been caused to us, nothing is beyond the forgiveness of the Lord or the restoration of the Lord. It doesn't matter that you're single tonight and wonder if the God will provide a spouse for you in the future. It simply doesn't matter in the long run. Because I got news for you. In heaven, everybody's single. You know that, right? Because Jesus did say in heaven there is no marriage or giving in marriage. Everybody's single. And for some of us tonight, we're just getting a head start. That's all. God says to you and I, I love you, I am with you, and I am for you. And that's the first purpose of Christmas is to celebrate. Celebrate those three things. What are they? God, oh, okay, you guys were there for me on that one. What are the three? Number one. Number two. Number three. Thank you. So glad, and that was without a cup of coffee. You guys are awesome. That is good news to give our hearts great encouragement. And to the world, a shout out for the reason why the Christmas season is upon us. With that, see you next week on the second intention of Christmas. And I see that the other class is joining us now. Let's close in prayer. The band will be coming up. And uh, we're only four minutes behind. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so Father in heaven, we come before you and we thank you for Christmas. Lord, really Christmas should be every day of the year because the greatest gift that has been given and continues to be given is the gift of eternal life that can never be taken away from us. I personally come from the camp that once you're saved, you're always saved. Can we slide into sin? Yes. Can we backslide? Sure. But if we're saved, we always find our way back to you. The Holy Spirit has got a leash around our neck, and he knows how to bring us back into fellowship. Father, thank you for Christmas and the celebration of Christmas. Thank you that you love us, that you're with us, and that you are for us. Help us to remember that when our flesh or the adversary or we, people that we love put us down or criticize us or say mean things that our first response has got to be it doesn't matter what you think what matters is what God thinks that you love me that you're with me and that you're for me Jesus thank you in your name I pray amen, amen. all right and is going to take us to into a place of worship and our commun our uh, offering time and then I'll be right back up Amen. Why don't we stand together? Until the sun
is our prayer tonight. some praise tonight. You can be seated. As we continue in this time of worship, we will go ahead and take up tonight's offering. And of course, first and foremost, we always just like to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your partnership, for sowing seeds into this ministry. Every dollar counts, and we literally could not do it without you. So this is just as much a part of your ministry as it is OC Singles for Christ, and of course, it's God's ministry to do what He sees fit. So we're going to pray over these gifts tonight. Um, if you need an envelope for either check or cash, um, lift up your hand. One of our ushers will be happy to put an envelope in your hand. Lift it up nice and high. While they are doing that, of course, we do have a couple different ways that you can give tonight. Of course, you can go to our website, ocsinglesforchrist.org, click on the giving button. And of course, it'll prompt you through how to give on our website. You can also set up an auto pay there, which is super easy. A lot of you have done that already. And of course, you can also use the Zelle app, which is by far the easiest. You simply put in that email address and it goes direct. And most banks use this Zelle interface to send and receive money. So you can also use it through your banking institution. And of course, you can always mail in a check and uh, if you are like me, don't carry cash, you're welcome to bring an envelope home with you. Pray over it. Bring it back next Friday. And, of course, um, we are once again just thrilled to partner with you. We are excited for the new year as well. We don't know what God is up to, but we know he is up to something good. So that is exciting. So let's pray together, and we'll just ask the Lord to bless these gifts. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the privilege of getting to worship you tonight in spirit and in truth, lifting up our voices to our Emmanuel, our God with us. Lord, what joy it brings to our hearts to be able to be with you, to be one with you, to be able to partner with you, just like what Pastor Thomas was saying, just kingdom building. This is the time. Now is the time to do that kingdom building. At some point when you're returning, there will be no more building, Lord. It is what it is. And so, Lord, help us to sow these seeds. Would you just multiply these gifts and use them for your glory, for your honor, as you see fit for our kingdom building in and through this church. Lord, bless every single heart. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ushers, come on forward, and we'll collect the offering. Read. 
Give it up for Jessica and her uh, trio. This is Audrey. And what's your name again? <laughs> Jessica, that's right. And Alan on bass guitar. And, uh, I, you know, we always, on the first Friday of the month when we do communion, we kind of dial it down a bit to give it a more intimate feeling because it's a time of celebration as we consider communion. So thank you all for being here tonight. And uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, okay, a couple things before we have our... Uh, uh, MC, come on up with some things here. Number one, uh, I kind of, like I said, I was sick the last couple of weeks, but I want you to know that there is a website, or excuse me, an email site that's called uh, prayer at ocsfc1.org. I know we do elder prayer uh, outside uh, this door here shortly right after the service for about 15 minutes, but during the week things may come up, or maybe you just didn't feel comfortable going to uh, be prayed over, but you can always use that email address to send us your prayer requests. We do have a prayer team that prays. They just met uh, this past Wednesday night, I, I believe. Yeah, Wednesday night, and uh, to pray over things. And it's prayer.orgcsfc1.org. Avail yourself of that. That's for you, okay? And next, finally, uh, what is, uh, okay. So I want to encourage you that um, the uh, program uh, in a few moments will be turned off and uh, archived uh, on YouTube and uh, our, fa our Facebook page site, which is uh, www.facebook.com forward slash OC Singles for Christ. And you can forward the program to anybody you want and share the program. So just know that's available and uh, you're welcome to spread the word. And especially as we move, we're going to be right smack in the w middle of Singlesville. So, because uh, uh, we're going to be near the spectrum, and if you know the spectrum, it's all singles, all over that place. And so it's going to be an opportunity for us to reach out to people who need Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And that's why we exist. And churches have, you know, ch youth and children and kids and all that stuff. We focus just on single adults and couples. And what's the last thing? Is there anything else that I need to cover before I get off the stage? Yeah, uh, welcome, Zach.